my own hometown. Stranger. Howdy, folks. Little Johnny, and time for another five on Friday. Uh, this week, uh, brought to us by the uh, lovely people at uh, George Dickel, makers of Tennessee whiskey from Dallahomie, Tennessee. Once again, starting out Friday afternoon. And we're going to have a little bit quick chat about, uh, about yeast, specifically about choosing the right yeast for your brew. Now, most, um, most brewers, when we're starting out, uh, we obviously start off with the kit yeast that's come through the can. Um, we sort of progress from there. And most brewers start off with just going with what's available at their local brew shop, which tends to be, by and large, uh, you know, a USO5 um, or an SO4, as I've got here. Um, USO5 being the American ale, SO4 being a, uh, a British ale. And for the guys, this is really the only option they have. There might be a little bit of branching, but that's your fairly standard option. And they're, they're good, they, they will make a good range of beers than most beers you're going to make. But there's far more options out there to give you a much wider variety of beers and, a much, and different characters and different finishes. So, for, the, for, for brewers that are starting out and still learning and looking um, to learn this stuff, yeah, where do they start? The first thing you need to be doing when you're looking at what yeast is you need to be looking A, at the style of the beer you're making and B, what temperature you're going to be fermenting that beer in. Because uh, every yeast has its prefer pre preferred temperatures. And again, this is why USA 5 is, is well chosen. It works between 15 and 25 quite happily and will stretch a little bit further. Uh, it starts getting dodgy on flavours. So, looking at the temperature it's a good, good, good starting point because you know what you. If you're looking to do a, obviously you're doing a lager and you're going to doing it at low temperatures, at, you know, nine, ten, eleven degrees, then you need a lager yeast to deal with that. If you're fermenting at eighteen degrees in the garage, then you're going to need an ale yeast, and they're all going to work in those two sort of broad ranges. But each yeast is going to have its own little characteristics in between. As I said, SO4 British yeast. Fairly standard, notorious for um, having a bit of a stall along the way. And it, it, only, it's, it's, I've got here temperature range of 12 to 25 degrees, but ideally 15 to 20. Yeah. So if you and if you're working this yeast or any yeast that's outside of this ideal temp temperature range or to the upper ends of it, you're going to push the higher characters. Um, the higher you're going to push esters. You know, fennel, so peppery, spicy flavours, hot alcohol, um, flavours that you don't always necessarily want. Fruity, uh, you know, fruity character and stuff is also going to push at the high end of the range. If you're bringing your temperature down to the lower end of the range, then you're get a, getting a cleaner result and you're not getting as much of those big characters from the yeast. And that's the same with every yeast, it doesn't matter what it is. Working at the lower, lower end of its preferable range will give you a cleaner result with less character. At the higher end, more character. Um, yeah, prime example, this fella. This, this is a Munich yeast. It's a, be it's, a, it's a wheat yeast for doing wheat beers. Um, comparable to uh, WBO6 and yeah, many options with, um, with liquid yeast as well. But again, this yeast will work in the lower range. And at the lower end of the range, most wheat beer yeast will push clovies like type flavours and as you push into the high temperatures they push through the pepper and they go in and even to the point where you start getting banana flavours at the higher end yeah so depending on what you're after depends on um, what temperature range you got so it can work both ways knowing what you're, knowing what you're after then you can come back to something like you, you know, a west coast ale USA 5 M44 it's the same with basically the same with USA 5 
And same thing, at, at 14 or 15 degrees, these will make really good clean fake lagers. Push them to 18 degrees, they're, they're fairly neutral, there's no, you get the hops and your malt are going to shine. You push it to 21, 22 and they start getting quite fruity. And again, you'll get that, you'll pick up those bananas and type, type, type flavours as well. And so that, again, depends on what you're after. So when you're picking your yeast, you really need to be aware of what yeast it is you're looking for or going to be using and what flavours you're going to get from the temperature you're working in. If you've got temperature control, great, you can pick your yeast, you can pick what temperature you're going to want and what character you're going to get. If you're stuck with your garage and it's a little bit, then you need to have a look, at, look a bit closer at the range of yeast and what will tolerate the temperatures better. But the most important thing for anybody, particularly getting into the into, new, into brewing, starting out and learning, is to try different yeasts on your beer. As I said, USA 5, M44, BRY97. Three very similar yeasts from three different manufacturers and all will give you similar but different results. You might prefer one over another. If you're stuck using one all the time, you're not going to know. So definitely worth experimenting. Don't just get stuck using USA 5 on every batch because that's what's simple and so easy and it works. Try stuff. You know, push, push your range. There are so many different yeasts available now. You know, Mangrove Jacks is really pushing the amount of yeast they've got. There's over a dozen different dry yeasts. So there's no need even if you don't want to, you don't have to go to the expense of pushing into liquid yeast. There's plenty of options with the dry yeast, so play with it, try it out. But most importantly, before you brew in your beer, look at what temperature you're going to be at and do a little bit of research. It will make a big difference and your beers will be better for it. So that's it today. Nice and quick and simple. If you have any questions, stick them down the bottom. I'm quite happy to ask. And I said, oh, I'd go online and do your, do, do your research on your, on your, on your yeast you're going to use. Till next Friday. Yeah, good brewing.